So I've made a few videos lately on MMORPGs that have been, safe to say, a little bit on the negative side, especially with Pantheon's latest update, and uh, if you want to check out that video, I'll link it below. And to all of those of you who subscribed from that video, thanks, uh, welcome to the channel. But uh, I hope today to go into things in a more with a more positive light. Today, we're going to go through, I think, the five best MMORPGs for old men or women or just people that want retro MMORPGs uh, that you can play for free online without forking over your money to a company that might take it without giving you anything in return. So first on this list is a little bit of a weird one. This is Hellgate 2038. I'm going to say that wrong at some point in this video. Hellgate 2038. Hellgate 2038 was a multiplayer revival of the much-loved but also blind... Blind? Is that even a word? Maligned. Maligned Hellgate series that released way back in the 2000s. The game was cancelled, I don't know, probably over a decade now, but the fans have revived it with a server that's very interesting. Hellgate London is a very odd MMORPG that I did not have the chance to play when it came out, because if you knew anything about the game when it came out, it had insane performance requirements. Performance requirements that are so insane, I think the game still looks pretty darn good today as you're looking at now. Like, it looks amazing for a game that I think is over a decade old now. Um, the Hellgate 2038 server is pretty good to play on. It can be difficult obtaining an original copy of the game, which you will need, but uh, safe to say, I know my viewers and you guys are pretty resourceful. The game itself is very interesting. Imagine Diablo 2, but it's an MMORPG, and you're just going about the streets of London as they look in real life. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, very, very interesting game. Would I spend a lot of hours playing it? No, but if you like that combination of ARPG and MMORPG, I think it does it a lot better than a certain current game, <clears throat> Diablo 4. And it's really worth just trying out if you can get your hands on the CDs somehow. Overall, very interesting story. Dark, if, if you're the sort of heavy metal goth person that I am and you like that sort of stuff, I don't think there's anything that gets that English goth heavy metal grit better than this MMORPG in gaming at all. It's like if Doom had a baby with Diablo and then that baby got married to a hub-related MMORPG such as World of Warcraft. Burning Crusade. If you've never played it, have a look. The server admins are really nice, and it's yeah, it's, it's a great place to spend some time. Next up on our list, we have UO Ultima Online Outlands. Now, you'll notice that I'm not using any of my own footage for this bit, because if I download UO Ultima Outlands again, I'm going to go back to playing it again, and I don't want to go back to playing Ultima again. But you might... So let me explain. If you've never played Ultima Online, which you probably have if you're watching one of my videos because you're old, but if you haven't, Ultima Online was more or less the original sandbox MMORPG. It was an unforgiving world where you had to struggle to survive. The world was... Uh, it was the best of all the features of Sandbox that you now know from Sandbox games like Valheim, but in an open PvP world. If you played a more modern game such as Albion Online, you sort of know what to expect. Now, what makes UO Outlands better than original Ultima or all of these other uh, contenders? Well, A, it has an amazing support team. It has a an interesting community, I'll say that. And the it is an entire recreation of the original Ultima Online that is more an Ultima Online 2. The game client has been completely reworked out of love for the game. The game's entire PvE system has been entirely reworked from the ground up so that PvE really has a purpose. In the original Ultima Online, once you got, like, taming high enough to where you could tame a dragon, you just took your dragon and you just killed stuff because you have a freaking dragon for a pet doesn't work that way in this version of the game. The PvE system, it's grindy, but it, it offers a lot more player progression. The housing system has been improved. The community system has been improved. There are daily quests. So what, what really the server is, is it's Ultima Online, that original rough feel, but with a lot of the improvements that were added in by other MMOs, such as World of Warcraft. Um, what's the one? Um, God damn it. 
Just what is that supposed to mean? That's for me to know and for you to find out. Anyways, it's a much improved version of Ultima that is worth playing. The reason it's not number one on this list, which is where I would be tempted to put it, is that it is Ultima Online. And if you've ever played Ultima Online, you know there are more psychos that are stoned out of their mind that play that game, and they are mean as crap. And yeah, it's... it's I was going to kill that guy. I was going to kill that guy's guts right now. He's it's... I won't say it's a toxic community because there's a lot of nice people too, but it is Ultima Online, a place where people murder for lulls. That's just them facts. At number three on this list, we have Return of Reckoning. Return of Reckoning is a rebirth server of the original Warhammer Online, a game that I was more hyped for than ever, being myself a huge Warhammer fan. And it's a redesign of the game in some aspects, but it really stays true to the game as it was at launch, more or less. Now, for those of you that didn't play it on launch, Warhammer Online was one of those games that had a lot of promise but never really lived up to it. Unlike many MMORPGs that had both a PvE and PvP focus, this game was more or less entirely focused on PvP. It is Warhammer, after all. So you would level largely through battlegrounds with a bit of questing, and then there was a realm versus realm tug of war that would push you through all the interesting lore zones that we as Warhammer fans love. The problem with the game on launch is that none of this really worked. The PvP didn't really work. The city sacking system didn't really work. You could never really force your way to the gates of chaos. They just, it, everything didn't work. I have some of my fondest memories of any MMORPG playing the original Warhammer Online, where I led my server's largest guild that had 10 members because the game died. And Return to Reckoning is sort of a hardcore community. There's not a huge amount of player interaction because you mostly just join raid groups and fight against other people, and you level mostly in what the game calls scenarios, aka battlegrounds. But if you're the sort of person that's coming from World of Warcraft and you just want to load up a game and play a battleground at any level, well, this game offers you to do that, and bonus for me, as a big Warhammer fan, you can do it in the Warhammer universe with all the cool classes that you know and love from that. Is it a game that I would make my main MMORPG? No, it does not have the addictive potential of Ultima Online UO Outlands that we just mentioned. It's a little bit more like a Hellgate one where it's a thing to play from time to time, but it's a very fun thing to play from time to time, and shout out to the community. The population on this server is pretty good. I would say it's not as good as UO Outlands, but it's not as bad as Hellgate. It had a really huge boom where the, pop, where the server was absolutely maxed out after Lazy Peon. Shout out to Lazy Peon, love that guy's videos. Did a video on it. And the population went skyrocketed for a few months, and now it'll be it's back to normal. But it's it's definitely enough to have some 200 versus 200 big battles, so it's still great. At number two on this list, we have something that's probably not a surprise to anyone that's in the private server community. We have Turtle Woe. Turtle Woe is probably the most successful World of Warcraft private server since Nostralius. It is at the moment at seven to 5,000 players on the main server, and with its new PvP server that launched uh, a few days ago, about three or 4,000 players, it's absolutely massive. A lot of people say that's due to the influx of Chinese players from other, uh, f due to Blizzard closing down um, the Blizzard China servers years ago, but it's it's not and also the thing that i found on the server is that a lot of the chinese players on there have actually learned english to be better to 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 better engage with the the other players like they don't speak much but they they will engage with you sorry i'm going off topic on this for those of you that don't know what world of warcraft is let me explain it to you it's world of warcraft okay we don't need to waste any more time on that but overall the population is amazing uh, the people are kind. It's got a really, really great community team behind it. And I'll just say this for World of Warcraft, because if you're in the World of Warcraft private server community and you haven't played Turtle WoW, one of the things that is the most impressive about it to me, other than the custom content they brought in from, you know, things Blizzard wanted to add to original classic WoW that they didn't have time for, that's impressive. But the biggest impressive thing to me is a large private server that is not trying to monetize its player base. If you played on other private servers, Ascension, I like Ascension. Warmain, I love Warmain. 
but you can pay to win on those servers. I could like fork out my credit card right now, bankrupt myself and be uh, equipped in full ICC 25 hard mode. You can't do that on this game. And the server has very much uh, only cosmetic attitude towards um, paying for things. And ultimately people don't seem that competitive as well because it is just classic while the raids are not that hard. If you want a place to chill, level, enjoy the journey of playing classic World of Warcraft, there could not be a better place. And I forgot to mention this. One of the things they're doing with the new content is that their leveling progression system is linear. So if you've never played classic World of Warcraft and you've only played other World of Warcraft, one of the things you know from Wrath of Lich King onwards is that with each new patch, your gear gets invalidated and you more or less need to start from scratch. This is not the case with Classic World of Warcraft and Turtle Woe are furthering that, that agenda by um, making more new raids that further the linear progression from 60 as you go through Molten Core to Blackwing Lair to Encourage. And that really to me is, is very, it really incentivizes me to play because I know that if I play a character, get to 60, do some Molten Core, I might be able to log back on six months from now and do some Blackwing Lair. And so I don't feel time-gated in the way that I, I might feel by a lot of other um, MMORPGs. And last but not least, we have the new Karam server for EverQuest. I hope I'm saying that right. From Project Al Kabur. So a little bit of an explainer for those of you who have never heard of the server before. I found this very interesting. There was a version of EverQuest that was Macintosh only back in the days when it was called Macintosh and not Apple. That version of EverQuest stayed at its fourth expansion, the Plains of Power, until it was eventually shut down, creating an entirely splintered off different version of EverQuest than the one you might be used to like me, or if you've played other private servers or TLPs such as P99 or the official TLP servers, it's a completely different experience in some ways, but it's also very di uh, different in others. But this new server has launched. It's going to cycle through the four main expansions, get to Planes of Power, and stop there. I think the server released about three weeks ago as of this. And I'm really enjoying my time on there. I'm going to start a Discord for members of this channel, maybe form a guild and just explore through it. Because I want to do something that I've never done in EverQuest, which I dreamed of doing as a kid. But because I was so little when Planes of Power came well, I wasn't that little. I think I moved on to playing Ultima Online by then, so that's not an issue. Anyways, I want to raid Planes of Power, and I want to do it with some of the members of this channel. I want to slowly get there, because I don't have a lot of time to do it. But, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Overall, uh, the server's community is amazing. If you've never played EverQuest before, this would be a really good time to start. It's free. It's a little bit awkward, but unlike Project 99, you don't need to go about finding the um, discs. The discs for this are freely available on their website. You can download it and be playing in, you know, well, however fast your internet works. It's old school EverQuest in the most old school of ways. I made my first character and I couldn't find any level one mobs to kill. And I just gave up and I had to make a new character and finally crawl my way to level two. It's very, very, very old school EverQuest. In fact, I think if you grew up playing old school EverQuest on this non Macintosh version, you'll still be surprised by how old school the Apple version, the Apple version is compared to the later clients. Overall, just having a lot of fun. Really great community. Yeah, sure, there's a lot of people that rushed to uh, camp rare spawns and things like that. But I'm not, I'm not. There are definitely people that get very competitive about EverQuest. I'm not one of them. And I've really been enjoying enjoying that, uh, especially along with Turtle Wow. Overall, I think we're in a renaissance of private servers where the Kickstarter MMOs, the Pantheons, the games that were so hyped that people were looking forward to, even maybe non-MMOs like Star Citizen, a lot of them have fallen by the wayside and people have realized that they don't build games the way they used to because their target audiences have changed. This is why Blizzard are probably, so they're going a bit off topic here, but I'm gonna end the video soon. There's rumors that Blizzard are gonna announce another mobile MMORPG. Why? Because there's so much money in these new audiences that'll fork out a credit card um, to play an MMO on their mobile device rather than actually playing these old school MMORPGs back when the payment structure and gaming design was different. And a lot of people are returning and they're realizing, no, it's it's not nostalgia. 
these games were just better and I, I really I really think they are all better and I think all these games on this list are better than most modern MMORPGs you can play besides old school RuneScape but uh, they put that membership price up real high you know yeah uh, anyways to those of you that subscribed since um, my last uh, few videos welcome uh, I'm going to be putting up a Discord soon, I think, for playing Alcabora EverQuest or just MMORPGs, RPGs in general. Have people chill. And um, But I appreciate everything. And I'll see you guys in the next video.